So, um, as I said, the main topic is thin lenses. Converging lenses are these ones, the, those that look like almonds, okay? Mm -hmm. And remember that we have several configurations to use in order to know uh, how the diagram is going to be formed. Now, um, but for this case, for diverging lens, we need to consider a few things. First of all, um, converging lenses, the last topic that we learned, has positive focal length. But here, this topic, diverging lens, has a negative focal length. So even though if the problem doesn't tell you that the focal length is negative, you know that because it is diverging lens, the focal length must be negative in the formula. So that's why uh, these kind of lenses are also they are sometimes called negative lenses because of the focal point. The focal point, the focal lens is going to be negative. That's why they are known as negative lenses. Now, let's see this example. It says an object is placed 12.5 centimeters in front of a diverging lens which has a focal length of 10 centimeters. Find the image distance, the magnification, the magnification of the lens, and describe the image produced. Draw a ray diagram. You know that for this kind of topics, we always draw a ray diagram. It's necessary that we do it. And let's begin. So the first step that I recommend is that you highlight the givens. So the first given is an object is placed 12.5 centimeters in front. Okay. So the first data provided is about the position about the position of the of the object that is 12.5 centimeters in front of that divergent lens now because it's divergent lens you know that the focal is going to be negative okay so the focal point the focal length is 10 centimeters that's the other data that is provided now the problem says that you have to find the image distance, the magnification, and that you have to describe the image that is produced. Also, you have to draw a ray diagram for this. Now, the good news is that in divergent lenses, we only have one possible ray diagram. So let's take a look to this to this image. I'm going to send it to the group. Okay, so you can have it with you. I'm going to send it to the group now, so you can use it. Okay, uh, somebody please help me. Okay, um, somebody please help me with the, um, can you please count how many, how many squares do you have in your notebook? From margin to margin, can you count how many, how many squares you have? 18 centimeters. In squares, how many squares? Uh, 18 squares, I don't have 18. But it's not good, but 18 centimeters, so yeah, I think that 18 squares. Mm, okay, it's that my squares are very tiny, so my squares are half centimeters, so I have the double of, of squares than, than you, for example. Okay, but 18, it's, it's not bad. Okay, I sent, I sent a picture already. So let's take a look. Uh, take a look here. The ray diagram, um, it's always going to be like this. Remember that we do three rays. 
the first ray I want or I request that the first ray is in red pen. I don't know if you follow the same colors that I use, but always my first ray goes in red pen. My second ray I do it in blue pen. And the third way I do it uh, usually with green pen. If not, I use orange. But green is my favorite since I have a red pen, a green pen, okay? So I, my ray diagrams, the ones that I do in my notebook, are in are done in pen because they look better, in my opinion. So I totally, I totally suggest that you use the same colors since for me it's easier to check. And please use a scale. Now take a look here. Um, the object, we can place it in any side. We can place it in the back or in the front side or in the right or in the left. Now if I place it in the left, the object is going to be in the front. If I put it in the, in the, in the right side, then the right side will be considered the front side of the lens. So, but please, um, I always put it in the left because I don't know, my brain works better like that because the sketch fits better like that. So I always put my object in the left. You can do it in the right, yes. But you have to do things like opposite than me. I totally suggest in the left, but anyway. So where you put the object, you have the front side of the of the lens, and therefore the other side will be the back. Also notice that the focal point is located at both sides of the lens. Okay, of the lens. Now let's see. It says that the image created by the virgin lens is always virtual and smaller. And also, as you can see here. The image is always upright. That is very important that you notice it. Now, how can we work with this kind of problems? The same way that we have been doing so far. <clears throat> the first steps are um, just listing the givens. I always do this step even though I know that you some you sometimes don't do it, but I like to do it. Okay. Uh, first, we, uh, the example says about the object. The object it says that is placed 12.0 centimeters in front. So my object, which is denoted by the letter P, is 12.5 centimeters in front. Okay. Of a divergent lens. So the problem is telling you that it's divergent lens. Now, because it is divergent lens, we know that the focal, which is equal to 10 centimeters, but because it is a divergent lens, we're going to write a negative sign in it. Why? Because divergent lenses have negative focal length. Remember that. Now, the problem says that you need to find the image distance and that you also need to find the magnification. Also, write about the image. Is a virtual image? Is a, is a real image? Okay? You have to write always, after finding the, the, the magnification, always write, describe the image that is being produced. So, in the first step, as usual, we're going to be using the mirror equation. I mean, all these processes are very similar. If you understood how to do the mirrors, you understand lenses, okay? So the mirror equation says that the image Q is equal to the focal minus the object's position. We substitute by the givens, and we have that one over Q is equal to 1 over the focal, that is 1 over negative 10 minus 1 over object's position, that is 
How much is this? Instructions. Negative nine um, over fifty. Okay, now we apply the reciprocal function in each side. So we have that Q is equal to negative 50 divided by 9, which is also equal to negative 5.56 centimeters. Okay, then after the mirror equation, we do uh, we proceed to work on the second step, that is the magnification. Magnification is equal to negative q divided by p, substitute by the givens. Magnification is negative negative 5.56 divided by 12.5. How much is this? Zero point five. Zero point? Five. Mm. No. no, sorry, zero point four. Zero point forty four, I got. Is if I got through point forty four forty eight. Mm -hmm. Forty four forty eight exactly. And why is not zero point five? Because why is because we only we take two values right after the point. Well, it's not point five because well, there's not a rule that says that that the image produced must be half of the size. But it's because of the number. 5.56 is closer to 11 than 12. And that's why it is 0.44. The half of 12.5 is 6.25. So that's why it cannot be for a 0.5. But the conclusion is going to be the same. We have a positive magnet, uh, magnification, sorry. Positive magnification says what? Indicates what? How is the image? Is it virtual or is it real? Real. It's going to be, it's going to be, oh. positive images are virtual, negative images are real, so plus means a virtual image, okay, positive also means that the object is upside down or upright, upright. Okay, upright. And 0 0.44 is less than 1. So how is the image going to be? Is it going to be smaller or bigger? Smaller. Smaller. Okay. So from this, we can proceed to work on the ray diagram. As I told you, I already sent you the, the image for the ray diagrams for divergent lens. The first step that we need to work is on, well, tracing the vertical line. Since your notebook probably doesn't fit. Oh, 
Okay, uh, how many squares do you have from uh, <clears throat> from top to bottom? Because maybe you can work it uh, in your notebook, but horizontally, because it won't fit. Okay, for your ray diagram, this is all you need. You need P and you need F. Okay? So take a look at the two numbers. Twelve point five and ten. You can divide in your notebook because I don't think it's going to fit. I'm not going to, in my, in my drawing, I'm not going to use the scale. But for your notebook, a one number that they have in common, the two numbers have in common, is 2.5. So if you divide 12 by 2.5, it's going to give you a 5. And if you divide 10 by 2.5, it's going to give you 4. So, in your case, if it doesn't fit, please use this scale. Okay. Now this scale is 5 over 2 or 2.5 over 1. It's the same. Okay, it doesn't matter. Now, as I told you, I'm not going to be using the scale here. So the first that I have to make is the principal axis. Then I have to make the vertical axis. The vertical axis kind of, okay? Now, now over the white axis, okay, over the vertical axis, this is my white axis. Over it, I'm going to draw my divergent lens. Moment. If you can use a round object for it to look good, you can use it. In my notebook, I use a round object for this. No, pues. Wow. I can't. Let's say. One moment. I don't like it, but anyway. Okay. As I told you, I'm not going to be using the scale. And yes? That, 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 that's the, the curvature. It has to, to touch the y-axis. Or no? Not necessarily. Take a look here. The look. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the rays, they go straight to the white axis. That's why we do the the white axis. The rays go up to the white axis. Okay. Now let's see. 
I will place my object. Well, first I will locate my focals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In this point, I have my focal. In my case, it measures ten, but in your case, it will measure four centimeters. Remember that. And the focal point is located at both sides of the mirror. Now, my object is placed at 12.5, which means that it's going to be here. Okay, that's where my object is going to be. Now, As you can see, it's between 12 and 13. But in your case, it's going to be one centimeter f a, a ahead, okay, I forward. Now, it doesn't specify anything about the object, so I'm going to trace, I'm going to draw a round object. Okay, so this is my main object. Are you following me? Yes. Okay. So there I have my main object. So, let's see. The first ray comes from the top of the object, straight horizontal until it reaches the Y axis. And then it comes back, okay, it is reflected until it passes through the focal point that is in the front. Remember, the place where I, uh, where I place the, the side where I place my object is the front side of the lens. And the other side is going to be then the back side. Okay? So the first ray comes from the top of my object. I will locate a, a point right here. Okay? From the top of my object. And I use a red pen for this. Please follow me in this way, okay? Also use a red pen for the first ray. So it goes straight horizontal until it touches the white axis. This is my first ray. Now, this ray is reflected until it passes through the focal point that is there in the front. A student from the other section asked me, Miss, why the, that ray has a dash line? It's not in the back. That's why she said to me. Okay. So, uh, I promised that I was going to look for it, but my guess, and I've been very specific, my guess is that, sorry, it is, do the the kind of uh, of ray take a look here is the incoming ray okay and once it passes through the lens it reflected so the reflection is the outcoming ray is the one that is as a dash line so that's why this one, see this one is a dash line.
take a look here in the it's a dash line okay now we're done with the first ray we follow with the second ray the second ray is the one that i do in blue it comes from the top of the object until i reach the focal that is in the back okay so i'm gonna do the same here from the top of my object using a blue pen until until I reach the focal after like that now take a look here for this ray okay for this ray right in this point the point where it passes through the white axis right in this point a reflection occurs okay and that reflection is straight horizontal like this okay so this is my second ray and the reflection is as a dash line Now, the third ray comes from the top of the object and it passes through the center, okay? It passes through the center of the lens. The center of the lens is the same intersection of the two axes, okay? So, right in this point is going to be the point where the third ray is going to pass through. So this is my third ray. So from the top of the object, I pass through the center and it goes over there. Now the place where the three rays intersect is this one. So this is the exact place where my image is going to be formed because I have a round object. I'm gonna have also a round object as a result. over there okay so this will be my image formed and now we analyze if it makes sense. According to the magnification that we obtained, we say that the image was virtual, upright, and smaller. As you can see, it's upright because it's over the x-axis and it's smaller than the real object. So it makes sense. Now let's analyze the position of the image. In your case, you're going to measure the distance between 
the object in the center of the axis. And the value that you obtain, you will multiply times 2.5. How much did you get? How much did you get? I mean, with your ruler, measure this distance. And the value that you get from the ruler, multiply times 2.5. And then tell me what is the, uh, the value that you got. I guess it should be 5.5, or at least 5. In my case, because I didn't use a scale, I got the exact answer. As you can see, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half. 5 and a half is 5.5. In my case, it fits perfectly. Please, we start measuring from the center of the circle, right? Yeah, from the center of the circle. So I got the Q is approximately equal to 5.5 centimeters. Which makes sense because the answer that we must get is 5.5. 56. So it is accurate and we conclude that it is done 